Welcome back to paper P4, Advanced Financial Management. Last time we were talking about um, options, calls and puts, and now we want to spend a few minutes to think through the meaning of real options because this is unique to paper P4, and it's actually something which has been in the syllabus only a couple of years now, and it still causes a lot of head scratching. Now, options are generally used in connection with financial instruments where they are, uh, the practices are well established for uh, calculations and so on. When we think about real projects and we think of options, uh, the application of the Black Scholes options pricing is something which uh, resists a, a, a application. It, it, it becomes a bit more difficult to to imagine. However, think of this. We look at a project, for example, and the project has a net present value which may be negative. Okay, now, the reason for the negative net present value is that the cash flows, the present value of the cash flows that we have modeled are less than the investment amount, by definition. Where does Black-Scholes come into the story? Well, what we're, saying to our, what we're saying is, under what circumstances, on a probability basis, a normal distribution basis, could the present value of the cash flows in the future, in fact, be greater than the investment amount. In other words, what we're saying is that if we introduce the notion of volatility into the cash flows, then we have a way to think about the project being potentially uh, positive and worth doing. Potentially. Not today, not at the moment, because of the negative result, but it could be, under situation of volatility, it could become uh, valuable in the future. In the same way, same kind of thinking would be if we have a call option on a share at a strike price of five dollars. Now if I were to tell you that the market value of this share is four dollars, you would say, well clearly it's not going to be worth investing or exercising this option and paying $5 for something that I can buy in the market for $4. In other words, this is an out-of-the-money option. However, this option still has a value because potentially the market value of these shares could go up and they could exceed $5, in which case it would be interesting for us to exercise the option. So even if an exercise at the moment is not worth doing, there is a potential value in that call. For a project, we could uh, apply the same reasoning. At the moment, it's not worth spending the investment for a project that has a negative net present value. But if we can delay the project and spend, have the possibility to spend it later on, what would be the value of this uh, opportunity or possibility to delay the spending of the money for the investment until sometime in the future. The whole thing turns on volatilities. We need to have a volatility factor, a standard deviation for the future cash flows of the project and on that basis we can think about this project as having coming with it a an option to delay its initiation. And that option to delay could have a value to it. So I've mentioned just one of the four types of options to expand, to delay, to redeploy, to withdraw. Uh, to delay the project 
is the same thing as having an option to invest, but at a later date. It's like having an option to buy an apartment at $50,000, and the option is good until the end of July, or let's say the respective month that one's in. The option to buy means that you have the chance to decide by the end of the month whether you want to buy or not. You don't have to decide to buy immediately. That's the option nature. Now, as applied to real projects, options thinking has a real meaning to it. You could take, for example, this is an option to expand. If a company can expand or establish a presence in a, another country in order to expand its market, and if the initial project has a negative net present value, then the company, of course, would not do the project in and of itself. However, if there is a possibility to expand on this project in the second stage, then, of course, there may be value created by taking the first step, even if it's a negative net present value project, and having the possibility to expand later on. And that expansion needs to be valued in terms of the Black-Scholes options pricing model. You can see here that we need to have a volatility on the cash flows, standard deviation. And we need to be able to define the five features of a call option to be able to put together a view or a picture of the pricing of or the value of the call option that is implied in the story or in the scenario given here. Similarly, an option to delay can be structured, uh, as we said, as another as a call option. And on the other side, an option to withdraw or to redeploy assets can be understood or redefined in terms of a put option. And these are all um, uh, variations of the real options theme. And there is also a very good article, technical article, um, provided by the ACCA. You can find it on the website, which uh, discusses and gives a an example of a real option at work. Now, when we talk about sensitivity and scenarios and what happens to values of assets when uh, prices uh, change, um, we can apply the same uh, or in a similar line of thinking, what happens to asset values when there are changes in interest rates. And for this purpose, we have a concept called Macaulay duration, which is defined as the weighted average time required for the payment of the cash flows, the average time required for payment of the cash flows of a fixed income instrument. What we mean by fixed income, of course, is a bond. So effectively, Macaulay duration as applied to bonds is, is a measure which is connected to ultimately to the uh, value of a bond uh, in relation to changes in interest rates. Again, Macaulay duration is yet another example of the rather big diversity uh, found in paper P4. Therefore, you need to start early in order to, um, to, to master the key concepts in this paper. Um, other issues which are covered uh, with regard to financing issues, the pecking order theory was covered in paper F9, so it's probably a good time to uh, blow the dust off your F9 notes and to uh, review them briefly because a lot of F9 is relevant for paper P4.
just to move on to another topic, which has uh, got some attention in the P4 uh, syllabus, although not as much as in the past, is the adjusted present value. Now, this is based on a, uh, this is a, a net present value based um, approach to investment appraisal. However, it breaks the analysis into two steps. It looks at the NPV of a project as though it were 100% equity financed. That's called the base case. And then it separately uh, evaluates what the benefits are by using debt for the financing of the project. And here would be included, for example, the tax benefits of interest payments and so on. So the APV makes a separation between uh, the project as though it were 100% equity-based uh, financed and then looks separately at the financing of the project to see what the incremental benefits are. And it's possible, when you go through specific examples, be clear and be aware that even if the NPV of the base case is negative, it's possible that the financing package makes the whole thing positive. because we need to add together the NPVs of steps one and two to arrive at the adjusted present value of the project. Now, of course, um, since we are doing investment appraisal also at the international level, we have to be aware of the influence of exchange rates. And again, this is, um, the basis is in paper F9, and we have to be oh, we have to be able to calculate um, future expected spot rates. In other words, forecasting based on inflationary differences between two currencies or in different interest rate levels. So again, all of the Treasury. Uh, treatment or discussion in paper F9 is again very relevant to this paper. Here you have a basic example which shows the projected exchange rate in, in one year uh, based on the inflation rates in the two, two currencies. Now of course with regard to international investments, we need to be aware of the choices that face a company with regard to alternative investment financing strategies. Uh, the influence of foreign exchange, as we've just mentioned now, and also taxation and double taxation treaties, they enter also into this syllabus. Um, in addition to, of course, the usual things, capital allowances, uh, treatment. So it's just simply another dimension provided by the international um, aspects here. It just makes the derivation of cash flows a little bit more complex to achieve. And of course, we have to use forecast exchange rates to be able to bring foreign currency cash flows back into our home currency prior to discounting them. Thank you.